RetireDetails.com and Louisiana vs. All Y'all. Jarrett Roser here with David Finley, father of LSU's new starting quarterback for this weekend, TJ Finley, and obviously Cody doing his thing at Ponchatoula, big game tonight against Mandeville as well. And man, it's, I kind of smile every time I think about the journey from TJ blowing up on the recruiting trail three years ago to now getting this opportunity early in the season. Cause obviously, I mean, you don't ever want to see anyone get hurt like, like miles is dealing with right now, but right, right. It creates an opportunity for TJ to, to early on show what he can do. What's this week been like for you guys this, this week or past two weeks as, as you see some of this come to fruition. Oh, it's been, it's been busy, busy, busy interviews. Uh, doing a lot of interviews and people want to get a history, you know, about how he got to this point and different things like that. But it's also been exciting, you know, like you said, um, you know, with miles, nobody wants to see anybody get hurt, but I always told TJ to be ready, be ready, be ready. It's football. I mean, look what happened to Dak Prescott. Who would have imagined as durable as he was that that would have happened, you know? So like I say, you always got to be prepared. I always tell him to, you know, when he being a backup, prepare like you like you're gonna start. But what a blessing came in at on this one is that you know Miles finished the game against Missouri, uh, uh, and you know one of him or Max didn't have to get thrown in in that situation. They've had two weeks to prepare, knowing they're gonna one of them was gonna play. What has I guess in terms of the the preparation now to this point, obviously. I mean, there's a lot of preparation that goes into to the player TJ is long before these two weeks. But just in terms of this this point of knowing, all right, one of these young guys is going to have to do it for the first time. Mm-hmm. What has the lead up for him looked like in, in terms of what some of his mindset has been, what the coaches have told him, what conversations between you guys have looked like and, and stuff like that? Uh, we actually, what we you know, it's kind of the same. You know, when I say the same, I – uh, Cause you got to kind of talk to him to get him prepared. That if you no, know, you won't hit away. That's what you know. That's been since football been invented. Uh, and uh, now it's just uh, uh, some of the discussions have been you know going over the old stuff. TJ, you know, uh, the pre-read snaps. Come on, we've been doing this since junior high. Uh, don't look down your receiver. Uh, make sure you look the safety out. Make him make him commit one side or the other. Get the ball out quick. Don't take a sack in, in a crucial situation. Don't, don't be scared to throw the ball away. Just going over, you know, the same old quarterback, quarterback stuff that I've been drilling in him since uh, since he started playing quarterback. So, but, you know, you want to uh, reassure him. Uh, you know, me and his mom was very calm. Uh, we, uh, we knew TJ was built for this. I have put him through a lot of uh, pressure situations, you know, uh, with – AU basketball seven on seven. It was I was big on seven on seven because the speed of seven on seven with all those four and five stars. Because you know you, when you're playing here at Ponchatoula, not saying the kids are not any good, they were young, yeah. and the speed of the game. The TJ high school was slow to him, so now uh, the speed of the game is not going to be too fast for him because he he was kind of like almost pretty much a college player playing high school ball, you know. And uh, so it's just been reinforcing and letting him know that, you know, we calm and collected, he's calm and collected. It's hard to rattle TJ, not saying he can't be now, because I saw Aaron Rodgers get rattled last Sunday. <laughs> I mean, he they had him frustrated, so I ain't saying he can't, but it's hard to rattle TJ. He He's going mean, to step up in the big moments, you know. He might not throw for 600, 500 yards like he did against Denham, but he's going to be efficient. Uh, I just want to. I just want to see him get in and settle down, and to know that the coaches are going to give him an opportunity. They're not going to. I just read an article where uh, Coach O said we're going to give him time to do. You know, to you know, you can't say, oh, I did, after two series, hey, let's. You know, then you got that type of pressure on you. You you you, you setting yourself up for failure anyway. So uh, to to know that I'm going to have time to get in the rhythm of the game which I plan for him getting the rhythm early. We can't afford to get behind, you know. But um, he has built a very, very good camaraderie with the O-line and the receivers and the timing. These two weeks have helped even more with the timing. So I think, um, you know, just think, he, he was throwing to sophomores last year. He had to raise his le- their level of play. 
he, you know, on a back shoulder throw, he really couldn't throw but to his brother Cody because Cody is a different type of <laughs> uh, receiver. I mean, he 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 has those skill sets. You know, all he got to do is to continue to work on his speed, but he has those skill sets of next level. If not NFL level, I'm talking about college level right now. So, I mean, he got great hands. He understands the game. So, he got a bunch of Cody's that's even faster. So, it's it's going to be exciting to see him finally with uh, surrounded with that type of talent, What what's his ceiling really could be. Because you really can't judge that off of the high school games. And even when we were playing 707, you know, we didn't play with, uh, like, uh, elite. You know, well, we played with um, EPS. But EPS, you know, a lot of times we didn't have four and five star players on the team. He was the four star on the team, you know. So uh, he had TJ has been used to raising the level of the players around him, and they coming up to his level uh, 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 versus. I mean, look at these guys; they already at that level. So it's going to be fun to see his uh, his his production on on Saturday, basically with the guys he's playing with. Yeah, when when you've got guys like Terrace Marshall and, yeah. and Eric Gilbert, he's going to feel like a kid in a candy store in a lot of ways. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, uh, I remember me and you talked one time, and, you know, TJ was pretty frustrated. You know, he used to get frustrated a little bit about the rankings and, and different things. He felt like he wasn't getting his respect, and, you know, they wasn't taking into account of the talent that he had around him in high school. But I always would tell him, TJ, be patient. God is preparing you for something greater. You might not be winning now. You might not win a state championship here, but God is preparing you for something greater. And now I brought it back to his remembrance. I said, TJ, about how much time did you have to throw the ball at Ponchatoula? <laughs> um, pretty much less than two seconds. You, he had to, it, I said, but that trained you to be quick decision, decision making quickly, make quick throws. I said, now you, I'm sure, that, you know, the line has done pretty good for LSU. And as quick as TJ uh, read and, and, and do, do what his, he do and get the ball out quick, he going to feel like he got an eternity back there. I said, that's why I say God was preparing you for something greater. Now you got that clock in your head that, I mean, you, you quick with it and you got to be quick back there. You kind of alluded to it some too, but one thing I had wanted to ask is from the time when we first started getting a chance to, I mean, to, to chat more and to see the colleges start to take notice of him a mm -hmm. few years back. And he became such a well-known name around Louisiana and for recruiting fans, really, I mean, around at least the region, if not the country. Mm -hmm. To see him from, from that guy to now where he is, what has been the biggest growth for him, whether as a player or as a young man? Because you can kind of, knowing him for a long time, you can see some of that maturation over time not right. just in terms of the way he handles things on the field, but just kind of his mindset for all of it. Which, I mean, you've been so close to it all. Obviously, it's not only dad, but working with him on his, his arm and his, his throwing. And his, right. What, what right. Well, what I've seen is, honestly, uh, you know, when TJ was in high school, uh, it was all kind of all TJ, TJ, TJ. You know, uh, uh, I would send him to a camp or something or to a trainer to try to say, hey, look, what does he need to work on? What do we need to fix? And they, oh, wow, man, this kid on. This is, I said, I didn't send him there for that. I want something to correct. You know, we're trying to you know, get better for the next level. So when we finally, uh, I say one of the biggest uh, growth in him, one, I saw that he, he, he had to work for it then. You know, at, at St. Thomas when he was there, he did have to beat out a, a senior, but, you know, the senior wasn't really a quarterback, okay? Then he went, came to Ponchatoula, and he had to beat out another kid, but he really wasn't a quarterback. Now you go to LSU, and those guys are quarterbacks just like you. So now you can't just say, hey, walk up to, hey, you know, I'm, I, I got this. No, you got to put in the work. So the first thing I saw was when they had the um, – we had quarantine when it first uh, started. They, he, came, he went in at 267, right. and he, they wanted him at, at 250 by the uh, end of summer. Well, he came home, and I didn't have to say nothing to him. I didn't have to do nothing. He was determined to go back. When they went back for the summer session, he was determined to go back under what they wanted him to be. And he was running two-a-days, 
he was uh, 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 doing uh, CrossFit type of stuff. And I was like, wow. You know, and I saw that he, re- he, he took it serious. Okay, it's, it's a job to me. I'm going to go into fall camp, and I'm going to show them that I can start. You know, he knew Miles was really uh, the, the leader as far as, you know, getting, getting a nod to start. And especially when they didn't have a spring, then, you know, of course, he didn't get a chance to, you know, it wasn't really a solid quarterback competition. But in his mind, it was. The right. fall he went in. So his mental capacity, his mental focus, his preparation has really, 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 really went to another level. In high school, it was really easy to him. Uh, 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 it was, you know, he was just so much bigger and better than a lot of the players that he played against. And um, I used to have to, TJ, man, you need to stay in shape, TJ. Da, 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 da. And he was just, it looked like going in one end after the other, you know. But then to see, you know, how it clicked when he went to LSU, you know, he went early for the spring. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, he's really, really, really locked in. He became, seemed like he came up, became a professional. Right. He almost had, you know, you had to or you get swallowed up, you know, and move on to the next one, you know. So he knew the, it's a business, you know, even though they're in college, it's a business mentality. The best player going to play, whether you two-star, three-star, or oh, four or five, the best man going to play. You got It's like the slate is clean. You go in there and you have to prove yourself. How much has his relationship with Coach Ensminger meant for him and, and for you guys through the years, both to feel comfortable about what he's going into and now actually being there since the spring and, and putting that work in? Man, uh, you know, if you know Coach E, he, he don't really talk much. You know, he, he don't talk much. So when, when you know, as, as parents, who's was like, hmm, you know, I wonder how that relationship going to be. He don't really talk much. But as we got closer to, um, uh, you know, uh, signing day, you know, signing day and everything, and TJ, you know, he was steadfast on his commitment. Coach Ensming is really, really, really a fun guy to be around. He, you know, he, he I mean, he's funny. He, he talks, you know, and him and TJ, they, they, I mean, they talk football, 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 and they love it, both of them, you know. So I saw the relationship with that. I was like, man, this is going to be, I was like, you know, I hope nothing happened that, he leaves because you know uh some people leave look at all the ones that left so our biggest thing is coach e stand because if he ain't stand then i don't know and the reason why i say that i ain't saying that say that about the, the uh, coach oh but you're talking about that's the him and the offensive coordinator is one you know he got to be the offensive coordinator on the field extension of him so it was very important that coach e stayed um and that's the relationship he he really had with Coach E, and uh, you know they hit it off, man. They they and you know Coach E really did his due diligence when he was recruiting, you know uh, TJ and, and getting ready to make the offer, because he went and saw all the quarterbacks before he announced, you know, the official offer for TJ. And then uh, then after TJ committed, then you know of course they gotta you have to uh, 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 bring in the best to make your quarterback room you know solid. So everybody was like, oh, man, y'all see, they, they offered uh, Max Johnson from uh, uh, Georgia. I was like, well, they, you have to fill out those scholarship positions. You know, everybody was like, what y'all going to do? I was like, what you mean? What are we going to do? It's competition wherever you go. Mm-hmm. You know, don't nobody, we don't run from competition. We're going we gonna to sit here and make the best man win, you know. So like Coach O said, it was a close competition, and I'm sure it was. They both, they both are, you know, highly uh, recruited uh, quarterbacks coming out of high school. But I knew for a fact TJ fit this offense to a T. And I think that, you know, if you think about it, that might be, you know, the the way they went because TJ been running this offense because, you know, they Coach Hank was running their – he's comfortable in offense. He ran it here, most of it here in Ponte 2 the last two years. So – that got him, you know, where he where he go, he's comfortable. It's over and over, repetition, repetition. So even before he got there in the spring, he had been running this for two years. Maybe not the whole thing, you know, but a lot of the concepts. As you see them get started on Saturday, what are going to be some some keys that you watch for early that, that are going to make you feel good about how things are starting and the direction things are going for, for him in that offense versus things you're you're hoping – 
to not see? What are going to be some kind of determining factors for how that offense looks for you early on? Uh, what I really, honestly, you know, people don't understand, you know, I'm a quarterback dad and a wide receiver dad. So, oh, yeah, let's air it out. No, I'm praying that the running game get back on track because nothing, nothing is better to a young quarterback than a running game. You know, if let's talk, I mean, you, you've been doing the football stuff for a long time. Running, you know, you, the running game, and that, that's going to settle. Think about it. In the NFL, when you got a rookie quarterback, to, the most important thing is run. Let him get settled down. Let him make some, you know, don't put the pressure on him to have to make all these throws in the beginning. Let the game settle down, you know, get some first downs, uh, you know, run the ball, maybe short passes and stuff. And once that happened and he gets settled down, it's, it's over. <laughs> if you let him get settled. If, you know, the worst thing I could see is him, uh, the running game not working, and the pressure go directly on him right away to have to throw three times, you know, just to get a first down. You know, if the running game can, can, can be solid, which I know it can be, you know, some games, you know, some people load up and they do different things and say, hey, we're going to live, we're going to live with the pass but we ain't going to let them run. But long story, to, to cut that story short, it the key is is running, getting him settled into the game. Once he gets in the rhythm, mm. but if they can rattle him early as far as uh, 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 put us in positions where we got, we're predictable, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, you don't want to see a young quarterback get in a situation where he has to throw the ball, uh, you know, 50 times to, to, to win a game. No. Nah. No, if we can if we can be uh, ease into it with the running, then he get comfortable. Then you you can put something on him to make a big play. He gonna have to make some big plays. Yeah. If you if you're gonna consider yourself a starting quarterback in college on this level, you gotta be able to make the big plays when it's needed. You know, okay, that first round, that first first down, five, eight yards uh, drag. Okay, fine. But now it's third and three. Are we gonna get this first down? Keep the defense off the field. You know. So that's going to be the key to the running game to me. Yeah, the uh, the game that John Emery had up at Vanderbilt, I thought was one of the more intriguing performances earlier this season. And then right. it, things didn't go as well on the ground, obviously, up at Missouri. And, and right. I think that's going to that be – That was a nightmare. Yeah. It, just seemed like, it just seemed like we got caught in a nightmare. Uh, I, I don't know. It was – I was shocked. 45 yards, that's just – like I say, sometimes it happened like that, though, you know? Yeah. We don't have to wait much longer to, to see this South Carolina game now and TJ's first snaps out there in Tiger Stadium. I'm sure right. you guys will be out there and have a chance to watch in person. Absolutely. We'll be there. We'll be there. And a lot of his family members bought tickets. And um, uh, uh, like I told them, I said, don't, don't text him, don't call him, you know, about n nothing right now. You know, let him – you know, if he let him focus, you know, don't he don't need to be worrying about where, you know, where do they need to go? Try because see, the tickets are hard to get because you got to buy them twos and fours. Mm -hmm. You can't go single ticket. You can't go three and and five. So um, his mom helped a lot of family members. They was getting on StubHub and uh, different places and helping them find tickets. But as she got a little stressed out, I said, "Well, look, you're gonna have to just give them the the, uh, the website and let them find their own tickets." Because, you know, a lot of times me, I feel, I, I feel like he's an extension of me on the field. So I'm getting focused myself. <laughs> you know, I'm, like right now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing the interview in the truck because uh, we up here, we feed the team, coding them team, you know, that they're a, a dinner before they get on the bus to go to the game. So I get into, you, you're not going to get much work out of me on Fridays and Saturdays. <laughs> yeah. Because I feel like I'm, if I'm focused and locked in, they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause they always look up in the stands and look at me and be like, uh, you know, just get that look. And I give them that nod, like, let's go. <laughs> and uh, it's time to, it's time to show out. Yeah. I had uh, yesterday, one of the, the local TV guys asked me kind of how much I'd, I'd heard or whatever. I was like, man, I'm trying to leave TJ completely alone this week. Let him focus on him. I was like, I'll link up with D at the end of the week. If, if right. he can start and we'll kind of chat about where we are now, but they've, they've got enough on their plate right now. Getting, getting right. all this. Right, right. But it's been it's been a fun process, you know, letting people just kind of introducing him to the country. You know, it's it's been um, uh, it's been it's been a fun. It's been fun. Good deal, man. 
Well, I'm looking forward to it, and good luck to you guys against Mandeville tonight, and, and good luck yes, to the Gamecocks on Saturday. We'll, we'll be out there. All right, then. Well, I appreciate it. And if you need anything from me, just, you know, give us a call. You got it, man. Always. Again, David. All right, yes, sir. Cody and TJ's dad uh, for Louisiana vs. All Y'all on TigerDetails.com, Jarrett Rosen. Thanks, man. Thank you.